I'm just looking in the cupboard under my sink because I want to do a video about this camera here. This is a 103 Polaroid land camera. Um, to be quite honest, I can't even remember where I got it from. Um, but I converted this camera to run on modern batteries uh, and also so that I can take paper photos with it rather than Polaroid film. Um, obviously it would have been amazing to get Polaroid film but it's very expensive and paper is incredibly cheap. Um, it means that you can be, I mean you can't really take a throwaway Polaroid photo anymore but you can certainly mess around taking a lot of paper photos and of course the the size of the image you get is large enough to be your final image because this is a Polaroid. Just going to open the back up. So of course the image that you get, oh, there's actually some Harman Direct Positive paper which unfortunately has been forgotten in there forever. That's unfortunately useless and uh, Harman Direct Positive paper is worth a bomb these days uh, because they stopped making it and I have some uh, unused but anyway so this is your potential final image size so it's it's quite a nice size to get a direct paper negative image or positive if you're lucky enough to have positive paper Anyway, um, I'm just going to talk about the modifications I made to this. Uh, first of all for a modern battery, which you obviously want to do whether you are going to buy Polaroid film or if you're going to use the camera for any other purpose. There's no button as such to open the battery door. You just press in lightly and pull and it opens up. As you can see, these are two AAA batteries in a AAA battery holder. You can obviously do this a lot neater than I've done. I just used some electrical tape here to hold in a modern small AAA battery holder. This black and white wire are the original Polaroid wires. Now, unfortunately, since I've already done the modification, I can't remember exactly what there was in here, but I think there was just a battery clip to attach to whatever large battery used to fit here. Right, so I just snipped the wires off that large battery clip and soldered them onto the terminals on the AAA battery holder. As you may have noticed, positive is white and negative is black. I also had to snip out some of the plastic ribs which were in here which I assume were either to strengthen the case or to hold the original batteries in place. Um, it was a real shame to have to change the camera even that much inside but that's really the only way that you can get a battery holder to sit in place in there. That's all you would have needed to do if you're going to use this camera for its original intended purpose of taking Polaroid images. However, if you want to take paper images, you would have to modify the shutter speed. I've just taken the front off the camera there. The shutter of the camera is contained in this front section here. That's where the shutter speed circuitry is as well. Under here is the light sensor. I've stuck the tape over that. I needed to take the LDR, the light dependent resistor in there, out of the equation as far as shutter speed goes. So that's step one of modifying this for variable shutter speed. Step two, I'm going to have to take this cover off to show you. I needed to turn the camera upside down because I needed to access these screws here. I'm able to just use a hex screwdriver bit with a small end on it to undo these screws.
So that came off nice and cleanly. You can see some nice old school electronics here. There's a kind of flexible circuit board in here which uh, must have been fairly innovative at the time. Um, some nice big discrete components also lifts out. There's no need to take it out this far but it's just a matter of interest. The green enamel wire coil here is the magnetic shutter release. So what happens when you open the shutter is that electromagnet holds it in place. I've got my manual override switched on here. I'm going to cock the shutter and then what would have happened when I press the shutter button if this was all installed in the camera is that would have come up like this. So the shutter is now open and then because the LDR is covered over the shutter will stay open until I press that switch there. That little catch there is what engages with the little piece of metal I flicked with my finger just now. So you can see as I press the shutter button that moves and you can see the cable here that transfers the force from the shutter button to that little protrusion there. It's basically just like a bike brake cable there. The two ends of my manual shutter release switch are soldered onto those contacts there. I'm always ready to go into the dark room and start taking some photos, but I'm just going to mention something now because it may be hard to see in the dark room. This is actually a used film cartridge um, and it's very useful because this is what I'm going to use to hold my paper and this will keep the paper precisely in focus within the camera. Uh, you can just slide the paper either up here or through there where the Polaroid film would have originally gone. So this is our little dark room that we have in my studio building that my friend built in what appears to be it's probably a, a kind of cold cellar for food possibly um, because this building is from the 18th century because this is the UK everywhere we live is hundreds of years old um, up here you can see the, uh, the red light the red light is actually an improvised 1960s standard light fitting and all we've done is wrapped some red plastic around it and that is perfectly adequate for uh, darkroom lighting. So it looks like the camera will be able to see perfectly well in here with the red light on. I'm going to be using this developer for the paper, Ilford Multigrade. For a stop bath, um, I usually just use water and we have some ready mixed fix here uh, which we usually use photo speed I think. Uh, these are obviously chemicals which are available in the UK. I also have these ordinary clear plastic trays uh, to put the chemicals. and. I'm going to be using some scissors to cut the paper down to size to fit the film cartridge. Just standard Ilford paper. I don't know too much about the different grades, but at my level of photography, I can't really tell the difference. So there's my paper. Here's the land camera. Opening the back up and removing the film cartridge which is black, so it's probably not that easy to see. Get me some scissors. Removing a single sheet of photographic paper. I'm just roughly sizing it to fit in that cartridge. 
You may or may not be able to see any of this. That's the height. You get a rough width here. You probably could use a template if you wanted to do this more neatly. And now, just shoving that so this is held in place by that cartridge. Place the cartridge back into the camera and close it all up. This is the most elaborate selfie setup ever. I have my friend's heavy duty tripod here. The camera doesn't actually have a tripod shoe, which is the biggest drawback of using it for paper photography. Um, you can actually super glue a shoe on there though, uh, which is quite useful. There is a sort of uh, crude autofocus on this. So yeah, next to do is to put another tripod shoe on here. You line the two images up in the two different coloured squares, the shot should be in focus. These are the light meter settings that I normally use for this camera. F-stop 7 and 6 ISO. Um, and also it's important to make sure that the colour selector is set on top of the camera. So that means that in this light I'll need to sit very still for 30 seconds. The shutter is already manually primed. I'm going to press the shutter button and count to 30. That last click was the shutter closing again. I'm hoping we're going to get one of those stereotypical shots where the image just materialises on the paper just like it does in the movies. Okay, we're seeing something. I'm not sure if you are. It's always hard to know exactly when to yank these out. Okay, that's probably as far as it can go. Into the stock bath, or mineral water, as I call it. Into the fix, which you cannot see at all. It's probably long enough in the fix back into the water, just to wash it off. And I'm going to turn my mobile phone torch on. And by the magic of movie editing, you should be able to see this in positive. I can tell that I'm not entirely in focus, but Considering the primitive focus on the line camera when it comes to close-ups, I think that worked out pretty well. I hope you found that video interesting and potentially useful. If you want to uh, modify your own Polaroid camera to shoot on paper, which is obviously a whole lot cheaper. If you liked it, please leave a thumbs up. Maybe even subscribe. I make videos about Arduinos, including the obligatory Arduino watering system. Um, I modified a Chinese laser cutter to run on G-code. I started using that to make laser cut marketry. I also made a blog about building my own CNC machine from scratch uh, using acrylic sheets and uh, the open build C-beam system. So there's a whole playlist which will kind of show you the process and all of the designs for that CNC machine are available for you to download um, and you can make your own. I used that CNC machine to engrave some veneer to create a replica of the puzzle box from the Hellraiser series of films. 
uh, which is my entry for the Instructables Halloween contest this year. There's a lot of miscellaneous stuff on my channel, but if you're into maker stuff, you're probably going to find it interesting to subscribe. 